Hello and welcome back to the lecture on Applied Econometrics. So we have been talking about autocorrelation and in that context we explain Darwin Watson statistic and how it helps us to identify positive and negative autocorrelation. Now one thing I really did not explain and I think that's important is the relationship between Darwin Watson statistic and gamma relationship. Now we kind of simply said that the relationship looks like this the dw star is equal to something close to 2 into 1 minus gamma right but I haven't really explained it and I said something like almost equal to but I didn't say why it is almost equal to so let me actually explain that so this is just a small video to just for that explanation so let's again go back to the Darwin Watson statistic formula and it is it is t is equal to 2 to t and we know why it is 2 and we have u t minus u t minus 1 whole square right whereas in the denominator I have something like something like t is equal to 1 to t and I have u t hat square right now let us just expand the term on the numerator we can definitely do that it will be t is equal to 2 to t we have u t hat square minus 2 into u t hat u t minus 1 hat plus u t minus 1 hat square and in the denominator since I have u t hat for all of this u t hat square for all of these terms I can actually write down t is equal to 1 to t u t hat square here also I can write t is equal to 1 to t u t hat square and oh sorry I forgot to give this summation sign here and in all these cases of course in the numerator t is equal to 2 to t t is equal to 2 to t and in the denominator is t is equal to 1 to t and the denominator I am going to have t is equal to 1 to t u t hat whole square square so now something to look at here in numerator and denominator the terms are pretty close for let's say this this term only thing that is different is t is equal to 1 to t and in the numerator is t is equal to 2 to t. Now if we have sufficiently large number of observations, so this observe, this difference t is equal to 1 to t and t is equal to 2 to t won't really matter. But if I have a very small number of observation, well then in that case it might matter. Now let's say, let's say they are almost pretty close to, you know, they are pretty same and then I can write this value for this term is equal to 1 if they are pretty close. Similarly for this one also ut minus 1 and ut if I take the same logic here I can pretty sort of approximate it to 1 okay whereas for the th same the term in the middle I will have this ut and ut minus 1 and in the denominator I have some sort of like the steps basically the variance of ut okay now it actually will convert into covariance uh, cor sorry correlation the numerator will convert into some sort of covariance and the whole term will look like the correlation coefficient which is essentially the gamma here which is essentially the gamma here so I can actually write down this equation simplify as 1 minus 2 gamma minus 1 so there that is why I write approximately equal they're not exactly equal because of the approximations I have done here this t is equal to 2 t is equal to 1 all on, for all these terms so that is why I write it approximately equal so this is approximately equal to essentially 2 minus 2 into gamma or essentially 2 into 1 minus gamma right this is essentially what we get from here so that is what essentially our Darwin Watson statistic and that is the relationship that we have used when we talked about Darwin Watson statistic and the correlation coefficient for you know whenever we try to understand positive or negative autocorrelation. Thank you. So that's the small teaser video on the Darwin Watson statistic and gamma relationship. Thank you.